You're listening to Science for Soundness, the podcast. This is not your usual podcast. This is a journey. And as with any journey, I don't know yet where this one is going. If anything, I'm hoping to inspire you to take the first step, even if it's into the unknown, even if you don't know where you're going and you do it scared. Hi, I'm Steffi. I'm an equine scientist and equine therapist. I've made it my mission to support horse owners on the individual journey of horse-human connection and personal growth. I want you to know that I'm with you on this one. Think of me as a friendly voice, a reminder to stay the course, to keep going, keep listening to yourself and to your horse, even when the going gets tough. Let's do this. All righty, gang, <laughs> we're back. We are back and this is part two because I said in the last episode that I might create some reels and other little things with those questions that I have left but I decided against it and I decided against it because they are quite specific but also these other questions have another common thread. So I'm going to read some of them and then I'm going to tell you what my answer to those would be and it might be somewhat different to what you'd expect me to say. So here is another question that is asking why when hacking with friends do some horses insist on leading or being in front? That is one question. Then Another question is on separation anxiety in horses and saying that their horse is getting worse. Then we have something else on a gelding bullying the other gelding with the same age in the herd and they feel bad for the other horse. What can they do? And although these questions are somewhat different, they have something in common, which is safety. And that is something that I have touched on before, that I have done some reels on, that I've kind of thrown in here and there, because safety is such a huge aspect for our horses. If our horses don't feel safe, they are not going to be able to cooperate from a space of calmness and ease, and they won't be able to connect with us in the way that we would like them to because they are sort of hardwired to perceive threat and anything that might feel threatening or seem threatening or is threatening will jeopardize their safety and if their safety is jeopardized they are not going to just go oh yeah right let's go do that <laughs> so separation anxiety and horses wanting to be in front or even behind when out on a hack or bullying other horses for whatever reason but it might all have something to do with safety in different ways of course I get that so a horse bullying another gelding in the same herd might be due to a lack of food it might be that they aren't compatible personality-wise, that can happen. But generally speaking, if a horse has enough access, and by enough I mean there is no shortage of food, so hay or grass or both ideally, if they have enough of that, if they have enough freedom, so enough space to move around and get out of each other's way, if they have enough friends, and by that I mean the right kind of friends, the ones that they like to hang out with, but also the chance to get away from others if they don't want to hang out with them, then they feel safe. And if they feel safe, then there is no need for any aggression within the herd. But I get that some stables can't offer that. I get that in some places we have a lack of space or maybe restricted grazing or maybe instead of restricted grazing, we have a very limited amount of time where the horses can eat. And there is a pro and a con for everything, but I feel like even that can be done in a way that doesn't imply a shortage of food to horses. So if you have, for example, an automatic hay feeder that has something that blocks the horses from eating for a few hours every now and then, if you do that, that's fine. But try and bear in mind 
that they don't get them to be hungry and starving because that is going to cause aggression. So in your case, I don't know the circumstances, but if you would have me there, if you would ask me specifically for help, then I would take a holistic look at everything surrounding your horse and I would assess their current situation and I would feed it to you straight and and tell you, you know, if there's not enough space, if there's too many horses on too little space or if the constellation of horses isn't the right one. And that can, again, have so many factors. So if a horse is, for example, not socialized very well because they've been isolated from a very young age, they're not going to have the kind of behavior that will fit well into a herd environment. So we have to take into consideration so many factors, but safety is a huge one. And separation anxiety is the same thing. It's safety. If a horse is anxious to go out on their own, it kind of tells you that they are not ready for it. So yes, you can work on that. You can kind of work on it with them, but don't push through it in order to gain from it I'm sure that's not what you're up to but I'm just sort of in general I'm just speaking in terms of looking at it there is going to be a reason and if you say your horse is getting worse then what triggered that what happened when did that start what kind of occurred before that behavior started to show and then just look into that for yourself again if you would ask me if if you would do a coaching with me I would again take a holistic look at everything surrounding your horse and that includes you and the way you interact but it also includes your horse's setting. Where are they based? What are they fed? What times are they going in out? Whatever and then just look at it and look at it from a different perspective and see what might have caused this and how that can be solved and in many cases it can but I also know of horses that were so traumatized by something that they never were able to go out on their own again. And that's also okay because we don't want to change them as such. I hope you don't at least. (laughs) We don't want to change our horses. We can work with them and we can work on that and we can work through that. But if it means pushing our ego over their need for safety, then that's a boundary in my eyes. That's a no. So as always assessing the situation and then going from there see what you've got see where you're at and then where you want to go and the same kind of occurs when you're out on a hack with your horse and you find that they want to be in certain constellations so you have horse a and they always want to be in front and you have horse b and they kind of compete for that first spot and then you have horse c who's always happy in the back and that also has something to do with their personality, with this, with their perception of safety, probably, I guess. But safety plays such a huge role in that because if you have a horse that is very insecure and not very high in their setting within their herd, so if they don't have any particular job that is of value to the herd and you then expect them to be in front leading, you are putting them in a position that they are not naturally in. You are putting them in a position that might feel a little bit of a stretch to them. So it's just, again, it's a different way of looking at things. But if you look at it from the perspective of safety, then it makes sense that some horses don't want to be in front because they also don't take charge within the herd environment and and lead the others to the water or are the first ones to gallop when they're when they're all having a good old gallop within the herd they are not the first ones but they're rather kind of in the middle or behind then it's kind of natural for those horses to not want to take charge so again not sure if this answered your question but this is kind of my view on it my perception my perspective and it might help you to just look at it from a different angle it might be a different angle that you haven't tried before. And the same kind of goes when you're on a hack with your horse and you feel like one horse always wants to be in front, they want to be the leading um, horse and you have another horse that insists on being rather behind somewhere or in the middle. That also can relate to safety because 
if you think about it, within a herd environment, I, I don't know the setting your horse is in, but for example, within my own herd, we have horses that love to be in front and be the first ones up when something's happening. There is one who's always the first one looking. We have one who's always the first one with everything. And then we have other horses who are kind of behind and they're, they're allowing the others to be first, but they're also happy and content not having responsibility. So if you look at them within their own setting, so look at, look at the individual within their herd environment and observe them, then you will sure enough and soon enough find out where they feel comfortable in, in what kind of position, in what kind of role. And if you then look at our interaction with them and look through that same lens that you've looked through when you saw them within their natural environment, then you will see that there is a correlation. You will have horses who are happy in front and they are naturally going to be the horses who are happy taking charge within the herd environment. And then you have other horses who are maybe a bit more insecure, maybe a bit more sensitive, and they do not naturally take charge. They are good at protecting themselves, but they are not so good at leading others. And there is a difference. So you might find that those horses feel more comfortable being in the middle or behind when you're out on a hack. And that's just, again, it's a different perspective that I'm offering you to look at things and to look at this from a higher aspect, from a sort of meta view and look at the bigger picture, not just the individual situation and, and kind of broaden that lens a bit. If you see what I mean, I'm pretty sure that you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, all of these questions again had this common thread and it was about safety and safety is such a huge aspect for our horses. I think we often underestimate that if we bring our horses into a state of hyper arousal or you know any kind of scenario that gets them to kick into their sympathetic nervous system then we have less of a chance of working together with them as a team. There is less of a connection there. There is less of being able to approach each other and move towards each other. And there is more of keeping yourself safe. And in that case, it's going to be a horse. They're going to try and keep themselves safe at all cost. And it is on us to try and explain things to them. So be it separation anxiety or their behavior within the herd or, you know, out on a hack, the way that they are behaving. It is our job as owners, riders, trainers, or people who interact with them on a regular basis to acknowledge their needs and their, and their personalities and see them for who they are rather than trying to make them do things that they are uncomfortable with. And again, yes, we can work on that, but if it is a question of pushing through for our ego's sense, then I strongly advise you not to do it. I strongly advise you to step away from that and, you know, don't get a trainer in who's going to whack your horse into position because that is not going to be helpful to you. That is not going to help you connect with your horse on that level that I know you want and you desire and you deserve because there is, like I said before, there is so much magic in that space, but you have to be willing to let go of that ego and offer that safety and offer that safety from a space of you're right and you're okay the way you are. You see, working with horses is about so much more than just performing. It's about so much more than having them walk trot or canter or do whatever gait they do in a set frame. It's about so much more than completing tasks with them. It's about so much more than just mechanically repeating patterns and performing studied movements. It's not about that. It's about proper connecting from a space of understanding, a mutual understanding. And at the pure base of it, that is your nervous system and safety is the hugest role or hugest aspect in that because if you're not safe you're not able to connect and 
that, my friend, <laughs> is such an important thing. Safety. So thank you again for asking those questions. Thank you for offering me the opportunity to, to reply to those and to offer and share my perspective on them. And I like this metaphor of trying on new things as if they were a piece of clothing. You see how it fits. And if you don't like it, you put it off, you take it off again and you, you put back on what fits. But try this perspective on as if it was some new piece of clothing that you haven't tried on before and see how it fits. Because if you look through that different lens, through that new lens of safety or connection or understanding, trust, that perspective of being okay for who you are, then that offers so many new open doors to you. Doors that weren't open before because you were looking purely from a mechanical point or from a point of the horse has to do this or has to do that or I have to do this in order to be a good owner or rider or whatnot. I couldn't care less about all of these things. I guess you probably know that by now. All I care about is the way you show up and the way you show up for your horse because that's what truly matters at the very core. And the sooner you understand that it all starts with you, the sooner things start to shift and change and they are going to be so much better than you thought they would be. And like I said before, it will all fall into place as soon as you let go of that ego, as soon as you start doing from a place of just love and trust and connection and yeah, without wanting to sound woo-woo, <laughs> this is not woo-woo stuff. This is just science at the very, very basic core. So keep those questions coming. And if you don't want to ask them publicly, that's fine. Don't worry about that. You don't have to do that. You can send me a DM. And if you don't want to involve me at all, that's, that's also fine. But keep asking those questions. Keep asking those questions and look for an answer. And don't take no for an answer. And don't take, well, this is the way we've always done it for an answer. Don't take, this is the only way that can be right for an answer. Or this is what it should look like for an answer because none of that's true and you know that otherwise you wouldn't be asking that question if you'd know that this was the answer then you would be okay with it but because you know that's not the answer you are looking for something else keep looking keep looking my friend and I'm excited that you're doing that we need the world needs more people who keep searching for something else hi friend I hope you found something in this episode that resonated with you. I am beyond grateful that you hung out with me today for a little while and I do hope that you come along for the ride. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and if you feel like it, leave a review. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions or would like me to talk about a certain topic, check the show notes for ways to get in touch. I can't wait for next time. You got this.